Welcome to Vegas Circle with Packy and Chris. And today, joining the circle with us, we're excited to have this fashion model. She is the former Miss Iowa, is an Amazon Prime TV host, image consultant, and media director for Deluxe Version Magazine, Miss Danny Reeves. So good to see you, Danny. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me, you guys. This is really such an honor. We get to get a chance to have you flip the script a little bit because we know you interview people, so we get a chance to interview <laughs> you now. <laughs> it's good to change modes for a second. I know. I was just saying how I'm a bit nervous because I'm so used to being on the other side. And, and now I kind of can relate to some of the people who I interview and how nervous they are. And like I just said, I might take over this and start asking you questions <laughs> on accident. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So just to first start off, you were Miss Iowa. How did you get into modeling? What was your like first start? Actually, that's kind of how I started it. I competed for Miss Iowa Teen USA when I was in high school and the choreographer there at the time was a um, modeling agency and she founded Ashton Kutcher, Carly Kloss. And so she took me to New York and that's kind of where my career all started. And from there I modeled in almost every major city in the world and lived in some of the most incredible places in the world. And I'm just so grateful. I can't even believe sometimes that that's my life. <laughs> That's probably one of the biggest things I saw being a you know world traveler, dealing with modeling. I mean, what was that experience like? I saw you, you worked in uh, Athens, Greece, you worked in Milan, Italy, the, the huge meccas of obviously of modeling. <laughs> were you at a young age doing that? Like you, you were able to do that really, really young or how did that work? Yeah, so I, I started really young. I like to yeah. say that my career is, tw if I tell you, then it kind of gets my age away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I can't lie. If I really want to tell you, I've been in the industry for... 30 some years, but yep. 20 years. So I started pretty young and traveling overseas, I think was just a game changer. I think that that's actually where I really started to grow mentally. And as a, a person, I always knew as a little girl that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. I used to think that I always wanted to be the next Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight, which has came full circle actually now. But my modeling career kind of took off and I focused on that. But traveling became so much more richer. I know that's so cliche to say, but it really honestly is uh, the way I, I learned just to be more relatable to people. And working overseas is absolutely incredible. And I plan to go back and live overseas one day with my daughter. These are all goals. Uh, it changed my whole life, traveling did. It seems like it's kind of like an exhausting experience to be in the industry <laughs> where you're going from one thing to another and you always have to be at kind of on top of your game. And, you know, I, just the preparation alone seems to be exhausting on top of all the travel and the performances. And, you know, how did you kind of maintain that energy through the whole, you know, beginning of that career? That just seems like a, a tough experience. Are you kidding? You had to take a flight to Europe, which is about an 11 hour flight. And immediately they'll have a driver come pick you up at the airport and you go see your agency right away. That's crazy. It, <laughs> depending on the time. If, if you got in late and the agency was closed, you woke up the very next morning, jet lagged or not, and had to see them fresh faced. And it wasn't always, you just really had to pull it together. You, you definitely have to have thick skin in the industry if you showed up and they didn't like the way you looked, they're not going to lie to you and you just have to be prepared. <laughs> Seriously, they, you are That's got to be the hardest anything. thing. Like, yeah, definitely. Like, I, you know what, you know, I just went through this last 24 hours and now you're critiquing me? <laughs> yeah, the self-esteem, I, I think, would be would be the most draining. You know what I mean? Your self-esteem is trying to, because you really got to be on your A game, like literally all the time. I mean, that's your brand. And, you know, this is something that I actually spoke about when I was Miss Iowa is that being a woman anyway, I feel like we really have this expectation of how to be and we're always being watched and groomed. And I just feel like at such a young age, I was critiqued about my hip size. So I was always concerned about that. And no matter how strong of skin you have, no matter how thick of skin you have, it always lives with you and you can be strong. I'm not going to lie. I'm strong in front of a lot of people, but sometimes I go home and it really hits me and I'm very sensitive person. And I take a lot of things that people say to heart. And, but as I get older, I just have to dust it off and continue because this is my dream and my passion. And 
no matter how many no's I get to hear and, or no matter if I'm not the right look for something, I know that, you know, my path is set for me and maybe I'll get the next one or the next one will be even better. And you just always have to stay really positive the whole time, especially if this is something that you really love doing. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that I've seen. And I know you've worked with a lot of top designers. Who have you enjoyed working with, I guess, the most? I don't know if you could pick one or the other, but who have you enjoyed or might have caught your attention and was fun? I mean, every designer is different. Of course, you have all sorts of personalities. My favorite designer who I've worked for, oh my gosh, that's a really tough question. Some of my favorite Clothes are like Roberta Cavalli is really like outgoing. Etro, I've worked with multiple times on very large scale runways and I really like the production of that show. I love all designers because they're such visionaries, but I really like big, <laughs> like extravagant type things. So anything that you can layer on and make it look really funky and, and more exciting, I have the most fun with. What are model scouts like looking for? Like, Because I know it's, it seems like it's changed right over time. Or what do they look for? Well, the industry has changed so much. I mean, when I was discovered, <laughs> this was so long ago, you guys, it was so long ago. <laughs> and it was so different. You could be discovered in, in the mall working at a smoothie store, you know, or something. That's not how, obviously, I told you I was competing for Miss Teen Iowa. But now I feel like the modeling industry has changed so much. Social media has changed the way the modeling industry has worked and, and reached out to different models. You know, back in the day when I was really, really working overseas, especially you had a, a height requirement. You had to a look a certain way. If you notice a lot of runway models all kind of have that same look because, you know, we were hangers and... And now it's not necessarily that type. You can be a bit shorter and more curvaceous or, you know, whatever the product really is speaking to. Sure. There's no rules anymore. On that note, too, with social media, what's your perspective on anybody saying that they're a model? You know, you have in your, in your bio, if you've done this professionally for a long time. Does that bother you? You guys are going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we got to ask you the tough questions, man. We want the real, Daddy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. If you really talk to girls who have been working, I'm. I used to work when there was no there was no social media ever. I worked when we didn't have like phones, like sometimes a BlackBerry. There were no. I was reading real maps, you guys, real maps. I was in the street with a real map, paper, yeah. looking for these places, didn't speak the language, had no idea what the language, I, what I was looking at, trying to find these places. And now I see like everything is done virtually and these girls can take pictures on their iPhone and then receive products and maybe never even have to go anywhere and, and good for them. I mean, it's changed and ev there's room for everyone. There is room for everyone. But as a working model back at, you know, like in the fun modeling days, I like to call them. Yeah. We really put in work, you guys, like yeah. honestly. And it was really difficult, but now it's just different and we adapt and I'm working in this kind of time frame now. And it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, that's what I've noticed the most. It's so different with, with social media and, and the way that everybody can just brand themselves. Anybody can be an entrepreneur. Anybody can be a brand. Anybody can be an influencer. And, uh, you know, I was, obviously when Chris and I were doing our research on you, I'm like, man, this lady has really put in work for a long time, you know? And, and I was curious because you've adapted and pivoted also, right, to make continue with your brand on social media. But I do got to ask you, how tall are you, daddy? I, I had to ask. <laughs> with no shoes on, I am six feet tall. Oh, there you yeah. go. Okay. Yeah. So I got, okay. I was trying to check my self-esteem. So I said, I'm 5'11". Five, <laughs> five so, all right, that's good. Yeah. And who is your favorite model of all time? Well, I love all the 90s supermodels. They're like such pioneers and such badasses. Yeah. Seriously, they were out there smoking cigarettes, which I do not do or do not recommend for anybody. But they were just so fearless and I don't know. That's when this, the model, the supermodel days were just so dang cool. And when I used to have short red hair, everyone used to think that I was Linda Evangelista. 
And I've always thought that was so cool because she is like the pinnacle of supermodels. And she's the one who quoted, I won't get out of bed unless it pays me $10,000. And I think oh, wow, yes. just like boss moves. <laughs> yeah, I was seeing, I forgot, what's, what's Tom Brady's wife's name? I can't even think of her. Giselle. I was looking her up. I could not believe how big her brand is. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. She's <laughs> billionaire. She's worth more than Tom Brady, that poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I could not believe. I was looking that up. I could not believe. I didn't I didn't know that that's that's what she was at. It's unbelievable. So I was like, man, she make like 45 million a year or something crazy. So yeah, um, and Tom Brady, which we don't ha we're not talking about today. I said that on purpose. Fan, I literally said that on purpose. I'm not happy with him at all. <laughs> yeah, I know you're cheese fan. That's why I said Tom that. Brady gets Tom Brady gets hit for a living and Giselle is looking gorgeous and making more <laughs> than he is. <laughs> yeah, that's no joke. With, with your daughter, you got a beautiful daughter. Are you training her to be a model and, and kind of following your footsteps? Is that is that kind of something in the future or? You know, I'm going to push her with whatever she wants to do. She definitely has a humongous personality. Yeah. And uh I don't know. Right now, she she just turned three. She does like getting in front of the camera. She's such a ham. But I'm not pushing her for anything. And I have been approached by a couple different modeling agencies, but I didn't think that she was quite ready. And I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what she wants to do. Yeah, timing. Yeah, timing is everything. You know, sure. is, you know, when you're trying to break into the industry, like, what is that learning curve like? You know, is it? Do you notice a huge difference between an experienced model or a brand new model that kind of breaks into the industry? And, you know, what is that kind of learning curve? So I could go, okay, I could go two different directions. So in the industry, it used to be that they really liked, you know, the younger girls so they could really mold them into whatever they wanted them to be. And sometimes that's a really great thing. Uh, but then once you become a bit older, then you kind of know the tricks and the ways, and then you kind of become a little too maybe smart and sassy. And well, I'm not really going to do that. Not like, not like you're too good or, or anything like that, but just, I don't know. It, it, that's a, that's an interesting question, but you, you definitely have to have thick skin. You need to be prepared. The industry can you know, there's, this is why I sometimes not sure about my daughter being in the industry because there is like a weird side to the modeling industry. And I think that a lot of girls might, you know, we had that Me Too movement and I think that yeah. that's still a uh, very relevant and that's a lot of where it comes from is in the entertainment industry. And so there is like a dark side and yeah, you just need to be smart. As a woman, especially, you need to be smart. When I traveled overseas, you know, we were working with such young girls sometimes and they would be, you know, sometimes we didn't always have our parents with us and you would just hope that your chaperones, you could trust them to get yeah. you to where you're going or you're walking to a train station. You know, it's, be smart. You, you really need to be a smart individual in the industry and, and kind of know what you're doing and educate yourself. Yeah, it seems like you have to put a lot of trust in other people that may not necessarily have your best interest in mind. So it does seem like you do really need to have that education to prevent those types of situations because it's like, it's, it's almost like you're put in very precarious environments and you kind of have to be able to, to stand on your own two, two legs. And that, like you said, for a young person that may be a little more difficult or challenging. Yeah, I would always suggest if you're young that you definitely have your parents with you, a chaperone, someone you definitely can trust that you know. Even at my age, uh, I just got a message from somebody asking for an image consultant and like speaking to men here, sometimes I don't always feel comfortable going to a client alone. You yeah. know, it, with social media, it's so accessible to contact anybody and you're kind of able to see what they're up to where they work their lifestyle all that so you really have to be careful and and don't be afraid to say hey I'm going to come with my friend or my parent is going to come with me I just think it's really important always even back in the day it was very important to you know just always be careful and especially now 
No, you, you bring up a great point. I mean, we recently had on John Willis from Free Space. He was talking a lot about that, about a lot of the uh, folks, basically just people just grabbing whatever the situation is and trying to talk people off and to get them to do whatever for them and child yeah. trafficking and all this crap. So you're right. You know what I mean? You got to really be cautious with everything you know, nowadays for sure. So I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, people need to know that, you know. Sure. Yeah, because, so, you know, sometimes we just, we want to be seen or some people just really want that fame so badly that they're willing to do anything and they're trusting anybody. But I don't know how many, how many strange emails or whatever I you've had to sift through and, and really use your intuition. I think that once that first feeling that comes to you, once you receive this email and you kind of do your research on this person, if it doesn't feel right, then you're probably, it doesn't, it's not going to be right, you know? So trust your intuition and always be smart. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And so you were actually on Amazon Prime's reality. There was a series called Veganista, right? Can you talk about, kind of share with our listeners uh, what that show was all about and, and what you were doing in Vegas? It was very cool. It's called Vegas Fashionista. So I'm the host and there's two designers. They have two hours on a $200 budget to make over two contestants and whoever wins. The concept of the show was eventually to make it all about a charity. So the designer's favorite charity would get money. But the first season was all about uh, whoever won got to stay at the hotel and got this free makeover. But it was very, it's very, very fun show. Yeah, I saw, I was looking it up. That's pretty cool. We had Anderson Vegas, which I thought was really cool too, you know, being on the strip and everything and, and uh, obviously good brand here, which which is awesome. So yeah. that's fun. Is he that still going on? I think to try to join. He wanted me to enroll so I can get a makeover. <laughs> I need to help the show out. Is what I told <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I was trying to find out what's still going on in Vegas. Sign him up. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so funny. You, we didn't even, all we had to do is just bring the camera crew and yeah. just the rest of the crew on the strip. And we had a line of people okay. asking if they could be on it. But yeah. they, the designers had to go on the strip and, and really find their own contestant who they thought sure. they should make over. And really, it was just the episodes will move you. We had one lady, we didn't even know her story, nothing at all. We, nothing was script. I feel like a show like that creates its own kind of drama because we're putting people in situations that they're not so comfortable in. We'll put sure. a tomboy in a skirt, you know, that is drama itself. Yeah. So, but we had this one lady and we had no idea and she did the whole episode and she was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she ended up oh, passing shoot. away. It, was, it will move you. Wow. Oh, yeah, it'll make you cry, it'll make you laugh. It, it's it's a really great concept and everybody loves to see las vegas yeah so sure. it's such a it's such a great show but uh no we stopped filming i'm just the host i really don't know uh got it all the details behind the scenes yeah. all the that got you yep no problem yeah it was cool it was cool to see you on that which is great and then how did you connect with the lux version magazine i know they're, they're huge in, in vegas um, yeah how did you connect huge. with them <laughs> yeah uh, Tim Hancock is the publisher and he owns the magazine and he is such an amazing guy. He's such a visionary. He started the magazine basically, you know how Las Vegas is amazing with all these awards and True. they really showcase successful people here in the city. But, you know, we had all these industry awards, best bartender, that type of thing. And Tim saw a whole nother avenue and started doing events where you really showcase and acknowledge uh, doctors, lawyers, real estate, philanthropists, anybody who's kind of outside in the community uh, doing their own thing. And he started kind of with that and it turned into a magazine. And yeah, I would like to think that we are definitely the best magazine in Las Vegas. There you go. Um, <laughs> No, I saw and, that. It, and you and you actually do um, image consulting and you're a media director for them, correct? Is that what your current kind of position is with them? Right. You're exactly what, what right. What does that so, consist of? Like what do you what do you actually do for, for them? Yeah. So with the media director, I kind of handle all of our interviews. So we set up all the interviews with any of our advertisers, give them tons of content. Uh, that they can use on their own and then that we use and promote on our platform as well. So I conduct a lot of those interviews along with the great Stacey Galandi, who's an Emmy award-winning host. So you can 
uh, be interviewed by moi or an um, Emmy award winning host. There you go. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I kind of conduct all of those interviews, that interview process. And then image consulting, it's with a team actually here. You can schedule an appointment with myself. And then we have Tim who also does like anything techie, anything smart, any marketing thing. He's your guy for that, for sure. Any kind of visual thing. Uh, and then I do all the fashion. If you need, you know, like how we're here today, yeah. COVID has really created an online presence and, you know, your viewers really want to see an authentic part of you. And so now we're seeing these uh, companies have to go online and either talking to their social media family or conducting interviews on zoom in front of people that you know maybe a situation they're not used to sure. so i i try to help also guide them through camera skills and and all that good stuff so there's a lot of different options that that comes with the image consulting not just fashion uh but also tv camera skills marketing that type of thing and under their umbrella, it's Lux News Live too, right? Is that what's also under there? So you've done a lot of uh, the Billboard Music Awards and all of those different things, red carpet events. That was in Vegas and LA and different cities, correct? Or, or is Deluxe yeah, just so in Vegas? Deluxe Virgin Magazine's here in Vegas and then we're in LA and Scottsdale as well. Oh, awesome. Okay, so three yeah. markets. Okay, good. Yeah, Lux News Live is under the umbrella of Deluxe Version Media. We get invited to do all sorts of red carpet events, which also included the Billboard Music Awards, which we were invited to a few times, which was very cool. And any kind of like grand opening of any sort. Yeah, sorry, you did a bunch of that. I think you said Sugar Factory's opening with uh, one of the, I Kylie can't even think Jenner. of it. Yeah, with Kylie Jenner. I saw you did that. was a huge event that you guys did. It's, that's a great experience, especially in Vegas. Yeah, why not? We live in the most fabulous city in the whole entire world. We have the best restaurants. We have the best entertainment. I mean, a media platform here in Vegas is just like a no-brainer. And I really think that Deluxe Version Magazine just does just does it to the top. Everything is detail oriented and we really try to cater to our clients and whatever their best need is and what they're looking for and really and really help them out. We're just a family. That's how we like to to keep everybody. <laughs> how is it kind of putting all of these, you know, shows on and you know being out and the limelight and all these eyes constantly just, you know, being on what you're either producing or yourself. That seems you know, like an intimidating process just all together. Well, as Lady Gaga would say, I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It. I've always, you know, during this thing, my mom has been begging me to move back to Iowa. She's missing. She misses. I don't know. Ever since I was young, please move back. But she knows. She, she just told me last week, you've always just had such big dreams. A little bit about myself to kind of go back. I'm from a small town named Hamburg, Iowa. We are less than a thousand people and my graduating class was 22 students. Oh, wow. wow. I really loved growing up in, in a small community. I, I feel like I had to be involved in everything because if you think about it, such a small school, they need all the students to participate in band and sports and choir, speech contests, all of that in order to have a team. True. Yeah. With that many people, yeah, small town. <laughs> Was it like culture shock moving to Vegas, a 24-hour city, and just so much going on? I mean, I had traveled by then, so Vegas wasn't... Oh, yes, yeah, true, modeling, yeah. So it wasn't so intimidating, but honestly, to be honest, Vegas, I feel like, has um, allowed me to really be myself. It, you can really be so over the top and and not feel ashamed. If I were to go out in Iowa, like how I did in college and everything, my roommates would ask me, is that what you're wearing? I would have like just big earrings on and jeans and a hoodie. Is that what you're wearing? Like <laughs> you could not, I couldn't even wear earrings with a hoodie. I was just masking who I was. Vegas, you could just, I really feel comfortable here. It's such a fabulous city. I just really feel like myself. Speaking of Vegas, I mean, we always ask our, our guests, what's your favorite restaurant in Vegas? Okay. So I thought about this. Because I know you guys ask. That's good. <laughs> okay. So I have two. Is that okay? Can I have no, two? Of course, yeah. 
Okay, okay. So I really like Chica inside okay. of the Venetian. Okay, I've been to that one. Okay, Venetian. It's, re it's, re it's kind of like tapa, um, like Spanish style tapas. Cool. But okay. it's a very intimate, sexy vibe inside. They have, I'm vegetarian and they really cater to vegetarian as well. They've got great options there. And on the weekends, they have a DJ that will outdo any DJ in the surrounding area. Good shot. You know what? <laughs> I just realized, there. Chica, I know exactly what it is. That's in like the restaurant role there, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. We were going to go exactly. there once in a group and we couldn't get seating a long time ago. I think I remember us trying to go there. Yeah. It's so good. It is yeah. so good. It's a really cool atmosphere and there's different rooms that kind of give you a nice little vibe. I really like it. So Chica would be one of them. And then my other one, uh, if I were to just be going out and casually eating out or possibly getting something to go, I really like Crazy Pita. Uh, I have to shout oh, out Mehdi. Yeah. The owner, Mehdi, is a good friend of mine. And awesome. he makes the best falafel. And um, good. oh, yeah. Chica is also. Oh, check you out. Our, <laughs> there you go. That was a good spot. <laughs> Shout out to Chica. There you go. I gotta check that restaurant. I haven't been there yet, but that's yeah. good. Chica, I'm gonna check out for sure. I've been to I've been to Crazy Pete. I got good food. So your, your friend your friend, I I give her a shout out for sure. That's good to have those two on. Uh, yeah, Medi, so. he's he's he makes the best crazy. He makes the best falafel, the best hummus. See now, I love Indian food. I love Thai. I love it all. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're that's saying, what we're that's spoiled. Yeah. I'm always looking for good Thai food recommendations. I feel like I can never find a good Thai spot. What? Oh my gosh. Thai Let dish. me hook you up. Yes. Um, Lotus Asylum obviously is like everybody knows that Lotus Asylum is bomb. I always add extra vegetables. Sometimes they can skim on the vegetables and <laughs> but their their sauces and seasoning is on point. Yeah. Um, if you want something a bit more heavy and a cool vibe, if you want to go downtown, I love Latai. The owner, Danny, is super cool, and all of his recipes come from his grandmother, and then he kind of tweaked them a bit. That's awesome, yeah. So you that's know, a good one, restaurants and the backstory, that's, that's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> Danny knows everybody, man. What else is on your radar? What else do you want to try to accomplish in, in 2021? I want to finish my kitchen. That could be one thing. I started renovating. <laughs> oh, the, the the renovation project. That's why a Home Depot and Lowe's and all these places were so busy <laughs> during during COVID. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. You finish it up doing renovation? Yeah, I did it all myself. I had a couple contractors come in with the removing the granite and my backsplash, but I basically did the whole thing myself. So that's definitely a priority for me. And I'm just saying that for my own dang self. It looks amazing, but I've got like one last thing to do and I cannot wait to finish that. But I'm really looking forward to uh, just gather, you know, like just networking a lot more. I, I really miss being out. <laughs> COVID has me kind of sad sometimes because I am such, I'm not an introvert whatsoever. I really love to mix and mingle and meet people in our city. And so I really am looking forward to doing some fun networking and bringing people onto our deluxe version magazine family. And uh, I'm actually going to start my pageant consulting business as well. Oh, we go. Got an exclusive. We got an exclusive. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside my image consulting, they kind of go hand in hand. But uh, I'm actually, this is the first time I've announced it, but I'm actually coaching a contestant for the Miss Washington USA pageant oh, awesome. uh, right now. And it's very cool because with this goes with image consulting or uh, pageant coaching or any kind of lifestyle coaching. I am able to do all of this via Zoom. I can do any kind of runway walk, pageant walk. I'm able to do that on Zoom, uh, create a great space where they can learn and educate themselves and, and we're open for business. So yeah, so I've been coaching one of the girls for Miss Washington, and it's really exciting, and I definitely think she's going to win. That's <laughs> when is that? When does that come up? When, when so her pageant is March 21st. Okay. It has been pushed back a couple times due to COVID, and we're hoping yeah. that this that's not the case. Uh, but all of her interviews have already been done through Zoom, and then they're supposed to have 
the pageant inside of a auditorium. Oh, oh. So I was going to ask, how has kind of, you know, we didn't really touch base on it, but how has COVID really impacted the modeling kind of atmosphere? Most of that is indoors, runways, people in tight seating. You know, it just seems like hugely, hugely impactful. We have all came up with like kind of a new game plan. Yeah. <laughs> we really had to, to figure out something because every single one of our events was canceled. I had a schedule and everything obviously like everyone else but the entertainment industry was like done obviously if you are doing like influencing on online that was a good way to monetize uh, but definitely this was a, a time for me to reflect and see where I want my career to really take me and yeah, I think that this time was, was really such a learning experience. And I was able to like have such an epiphany on my career. I've, I could never imagine myself being outside of fashion. I just know that industry way too well. And so when Tim actually, Tim Hancock, our publisher brought up the idea of us launching this, I just thought, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely seem like you're finding your lane and really taking all your experience and putting it in all these different endeavors. And it's uh, for sure, definitely going to breed some success. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I feel like just, I know so much about the fashion industry and, and really can gauge everybody's body type pretty well and, and find a good sense of style for them, uh, no matter what their job is. And I think being a mom actually helps me be very relatable too. Uh, sometimes I think your image can be a bit intimidating and then I have to remind some people I'm just a really small town girl. I have a baby. I don't always have it together either. And I'm here to like help motivate you in any type of way to, obviously your image says a lot about you. And once you kind of have that together, I really feel like success is in your doorway. That's great. And you got hands-on experience. We're going to change hats for one second and say, uh, do you have any questions for us at all <laughs> that you would ask or anything you want to share that's on your, on your, uh, Who are you rooting for in the Super Bowl? Because I really need to know. <laughs> you know what? I, uh, I had a feeling Brady was going to win. I, yeah. I really did. Really? I really did. I, I did. I, originally and, you know, Tom Brady went to U of M, University of Michigan. So I, I always root for Brady. <laughs> I'm not a Brady fan. But no, no, that's just where I grew up. And I was always a big fan of him even in college. And then, uh, you know, in, when you're, I guess, married to a supermodel, you can't fault the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured right there. No, I, I didn't know who was going to win, but I just figured because Brady's, I mean, he's the GOAT, hands down. I mean, he's the GOAT for sure. I just thought it was going to be his time, man. It's just going in that direction. So, yeah. you know, I didn't you care. Deny, I didn't care with. You can't deny greatness. Tom Brady is great. He's great. <laughs> yeah. No, he actually, is. really, I he really is great. And anybody who is constantly challenging themselves and and it, good for him for continuing to want to to go after his dreams and. Until until he went, you know, I think he yeah. should be going. I'm sure Giselle is in the back of his head, like, please, I can you please be home? <laughs> yeah. So joke, man. When you're in the sports industry, it's no joke. I know he's probably already started now. It's prepping and food prep and the whole nine. But he um, looks so young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they showed the I was watching it yesterday and they show like the aging where he's getting older and it's like he's aging backwards. He has yeah. the, that's Giselle. That's the supermodel. Keeping him healthy and in shape and looking young. Yeah. The guy started off 40, now he's 20. Like, that's exactly how he looks. Do us up right. It's the vegan diet, I think. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, what, exactly. That's what, that's what I keep hearing. Yeah. What is some of your social handles? How can people reach you? I know with your agency coming out, can you kind of shout out how they can reach you and then obviously the deluxe? Sure. So, uh, my personal Instagram is I am Danny Reeves. And Deluxe Version Magazine is our IG, Deluxe Version Magazine. And my Facebook, I really don't post on there. I mean, sometimes, so we're going to skip that one. Yeah. Um, but you can find me on there at Danny Reeves. Uh, awesome. So yeah, Instagram, I am Danny Reeves, and then Deluxe Version Magazine. 
Yeah, it's, it's fun hanging out with you. It's, it's good to be able to learn just some of the insight and then just kind of the model industry, how demanding it is, and then learn from a veteran like yourself and then still going and impacting, it, which is great. So one thing I want to say too is yeah. can I put everybody go and check out Tim Hancock's Instagram too, because sure. it's so classy and he's got all the great spots in Vegas and in LA, any kind of hotel hookups, the yeah. best restaurants. He's got such a great feed too. And Honestly, he, he's like one of my best friends and he does such great things for this city. So go and check him out as well. We'll have to connect and have Tim on. We'll say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll have to connect, get it, have him on. That's, that's great. Yeah. So you'll be able to see us at the VegasCircle.com. So we appreciate you hanging out with us, Dan. That was, that was great. Thank you so much, guys. I had yep. a blast. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you. Thanks again.